Hello and welcome to Yupari's Portrait Course. I am Yupari and I'm going to be your guide uh, as we develop and as we explore the realm of traditional portrait painting. And in this week's video, we're going to be starting off a brand new painting. And so we're going to be starting off this traditional painting uh, with a transfer drawing. So we're going to be trying to figure out just where things fit. We want to get the angle of the eyes just right, the distance from the forehead down to the nose, down to the chin and whatnot. We want to get these proportions fairly early on to facilitate the development of not only the colors, but the values as well. So let's get to the video. And here we have an image of our model, Jen. And I'm going to keep a picture of her to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as the process unfolds. So we're going to be starting off on a 11 by 14 inch Strathmore drawing pad. And we're starting off with just a 2B graphite pencil. And if at any point in this video are you curious as to what materials I'm using, all of that information will be typed in the description box below. So if you're curious about what materials exactly I'm using, that's going to be typed in the description box for you. So the beginning involves a very uh, simple linear drawing. And this is going to be referred to as the transfer drawing. And it is the where do things fit part of the process. So we're going to be starting off uh, with the top and the bottom most extremities of the head. And we're going to be working from general to specific, and that means that we're going to be uh, just trying to gauge our drawing and gauge our proportions by eye for a little while at first, and then we're going to show you how to uh, build more specificity on top of that. But as you can see, we're just working with a simple shape. Now one major advantage to uh, using a transfer drawing is composition. We can place the head pretty much anywhere we want on our drawing pad so long as we draw the head accurately because then when we transfer it on to the canvas or the panel that we will be working on then we will have the most freedom to place that head or place the figure or whatever you're working on at the exact place that you want in the time of transfer. But for right now, we're asking the question of where do things fit in relation to one another? And I don't mean where does the head fit in relation to the drawing pad. I mean, where does this corner right here to the side of the top of the head fit in relation to the surrounding shapes? And again, just using straight lines and angles, working very uh, generally I'm just eyeballing the contours and just constructing a very loose and simple straight lines and angles. Now we're just trying to see how each shape relates to each corresponding shape just by eye. Uh, but the uh, magic of graphite is we can erase it and then have a very uh, light line to work on top of it. It's not quite as forgiving as charcoal, but it gives you so much more uh, of a specific mark. Now here we have a little swooping line here for the shoulder. Uh, one shoulder is at an angle in relation to the other. And now we're going to draw in the center line of the portrait. This center line is going to give me exactly uh, what turn the model is making in relation to me. But it's not quite the most important angle yet. And I'll get to what the most important angle is. And of course, that's just in my opinion. All of this is in my opinion. So here we're starting to construct a little bit more of a outline. Here we have a corner of the side of the, uh, the eye socket, pretty much just eyeballing where this shape is supposed to go. And I should say when you're working with graphite, you really want to work very lightly, a very light touch in the beginning and hold the pencil from the back end as you see me doing here. So here we have the axis for the eyebrows and now we have a very defined corner for the top of the head and the bottom of the head and now we're going to place in a little uh, rectangular shape here to block in uh, where the eyebrows and the eyes are going to fit 
And again, this is all working uh, just by eye, just eyeballing what these shapes are. Now we have a little mark here for where we think that the bottom of the nose is going to go. And in general, the forehead to the eyebrows is one third, the eyebrows to the nose is another third, and then the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin is another third. But as you can already tell with that center line and the angle of the eye sockets, the model is actually tilted up. So the model is tilted up and turned to the right. Remember, you're drawing the pose, not the model. So what we're looking for is the pose. The question that we're asking is, what is the model doing? What is the model physically doing in relation to us? That's what we're trying to get at first. So now with the eraser, we're just going to push that line up a little bit. It's important to be uh, clear with your marks because that clarity will help you to gauge where everything fits. Now we have a little line for the bottom of the mouth. And what I mean is that their tendency could be to be overly loose and sketchy, uh, which is a nice aesthetic. And it's a lot of fun uh, to make a bunch of random marks. Uh, but that kind of sacrifices a little bit of specificity and it's somewhat uh, it's like verbally, it's like pictorially stuttering. Now, I know stuttering is inevitable in conversation, so uh, having a kind of loose and uh, almost painterly messy touch uh, with the drawing is, is all right. Again, just like stuttering is to speech, it's all right if a line kind of gets out of proportion. But right now, what we're looking for is just a simple shape of each feature. Now you can see just two little marks, and now we have a third mark for the eye to the left of your screen. And now we're looking at the corner of the eye socket. Again, we're constructing this with simple straight lines and angles. Now we're going to follow through and just eyeball where the other eye is going to fit. So look at this angle here. So that angle uh, is very specific, but we're working very generally at first. So here we have started the other eye with just three lines. Now we've added in a fourth line. So you can see how simple that starts. And now we have a little uh, shape for the eyebrow and then a little angle. You can see how the eyebrow is kind of following uh, the shape of the eye socket. And the challenge in this pose is going to be in the uh, tilt. That the model is making. The tendency is going to be to try to center or frontalize uh, the pose, but we have to be careful and maintain the correct tilt. And that means that the, uh, the forehead is going to be a little bit foreshortened as the model is tipping back. And we're going to be seeing a little bit more uh, distance from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. So we're going to be uh, very cautious of those marks. So now we have the corner of the side of the mouth and the top side of the mouth. It's important to be bold with it. Just make your marks and make them specific and make them clear. And if they're wrong, which they're going to be wrong inevitably with every artist, even the old masters didn't get it right at first. Uh, now I can't speak for them because I don't know, but I suppose that even the old masters had to start somewhere. So this is how we're working generally, general to specific. So now we have some little uh, simple shapes here for the iris, very simplified shape for the iris. Again, this is not the final outline, but this is something to get us started. This is a uh, roughed draft. So that is how you want to start a block in with very simple shapes and just gauging your proportions by eye. Now let's get into some of the specificity. So here is our little magic T-square. And I'm going to introduce to you what the most important angle is uh, for the portrait. And this angle you want to get as correctly as you can possibly get however you want to do this. Walk up to the model and hold out a uh, paintbrush and try to get this angle or whatever uh, you want to do. If you're working on a photo reference, just 
place your uh, T-square right up to the photo reference and get this angle. So that angle is the angle in between the two eyes from tear duct to tear duct, from corner of the eye, from corner of the eye. This angle is going to determine everything, everything. I have drawn and I've painted hundreds of portraits in my lifetime and I, it just so happens that this angle is crucial. If anything, in the first sitting or first, first pose, if you get anything right, you really want it to be that angle. This angle, now that we have established it, this angle will not change. And it's not that hard to, to get. It may take a few minutes to really try to measure it. But once you get that angle, then you can start to compare distances with a degree of specificity. So now we see that the tear duct to the left of your screen, uh, so that is the eye to the left of your screen, is going to be hidden a tiny bit uh, by the side of the nose. So here we have some little calipers here, and we're going to get really specific. So the distance between the eyes in general is the length of an eye. But now you can really see how I'm making a mark for the tear duct, how the tear duct is hidden by the side of the nose. So now we're going to mark one eye length. And again, we're following on this line that we created. And now we're going to notice that the model's eyes are a little bit further apart than the average. Now the average is that the uh, distance between the eyes is the length of one eye in general when a model is facing you. But this model is in three quarter so we have now made that observation that the eyes are a tiny bit further apart. Now using the T-square, we drew in a vertical line from the corner of uh, the tear duct to the right of your screen. That vertical line is going to help us place uh, more precisely where these uh, shapes are going to fit. And uh, of course, all of these measurements are taken uh, you can take them however you want. You can measure them directly on the model if you're working from life, or you can measure them directly from the photo reference. That's perfectly fine. Here's a little dot right here uh, for where I think that the nasal bone is going to fit. And so the nose actually begins at the top of the nasal bone. And the top of the nasal bone is actually a little bit higher up than the tear ducts usually and especially it's going to be especially prevalent when the model's head is tipped down so again we're going to be looking at this measurement so that is from the uh, tear duct to the side of the eye and again we're going to see that that eye is a little bit larger than this one and that is because the head is in perspective the model is turned uh, to the right now this is how we do a uh, a length to height comparison, or you can call this a height to width uh, measurement. So we actually can see now, if you can picture the eye turning completely vertical, it matches up almost with the bottom of the nose. And the key word is almost. You can see here now we're going to double check uh, that these angles are matching up now, if the model's head was as big as a skyscraper, then these angles would tend to converge extremely close. But because the model's head, uh, the human head, is not usually that big, the angles are actually very close to being parallel with even the tiniest tip. So here we're going to have another measurement from this tear duct uh, to the corner of the eye to the right. And now this is not a uh, standard measurement. This is just something that I observed looking at the model, just trying to pinpoint uh, salient points in relation to one another to try and get the most specificity that I possibly can obtain. Now this, uh, this angle here between the two, uh, this line here and the line of the mouth must match up. Now we were pretty close by eye with that angle, but you can see that we placed the mouth and the nose a little bit too far down, which was the tendency that I mentioned before to try and frontalize the face. So now we're going to use another measurement. 
So the corner of the eye right here actually matches up plumb to the side of the nose. Plumb just means on a vertical. That's why it's important to have a T-square because imagine how difficult it is to hang a picture on a wall and have it perfectly straight. That's, that's a little bit harder than it looks. Now imagine what that's going to be like on the portrait because the portrait is the story of how a bunch of little things made your day or ruined your day. So let's let the portrait be the story of how a bunch of little things just made everything fit. And so that is how we obtain the accuracy by observing these measurements. And remember, it's all based on that angle between the two eyes. That angle is the most important in terms of gauging the specificity. Now, let's look at this uh, angle, or sorry, this uh, plumb, this vertical plumb right here. So we see that the corner of the mouth actually goes a tiny bit further than the corner of the mouth. So now let's look at this measurement here and let's look at this uh, based on the vertical line that we drew. Now let's compare it uh, to the bottom of the chin just looking right about here. So now we can tell that the chin is going to have to get a little bit lower and again it's not a conventional uh, way to measure but if it works it works and if it works just use it whatever works so now we're going to move the chin up a little bit now this is because by eye i did not get the tilt of the pose correct that is just something i was not able to do by eye and it's okay now we're going to be erasing uh the mouth that we and the chin that we uh, initially placed incorrectly but of course this is all a building process so you can literally see how we're working from general to specific and it graphite's actually nice because it doesn't completely erase so you can kind of see uh, your past marks so now we're going to use a perpendicular line here and this is why it's important to have a t-square for this type of specificity uh, so now you can see the perpendicular running from the uh, axis of the mouth and the axes of the nose not to get too much into geometry but between any two parallel lines there exists a line that can be exactly perpendicular to those two lines now the lines that i'm referring to are the axis for the bottom of the nose and the axis for the mouth now they are not exactly parallel the angles should converge to a vanishing point in theory but again, the model's head is not the size of a skyscraper, so that angle is not going to be so prevalent. Now, that is one thing that photo, photographs tend to exaggerate. Perspective depends on the type of lens that you use. Uh, but this is a way that we can obtain a specificity even beyond that of our smartphones. Because a smartphone photograph of the model in this uh, pose may tend to exaggerate uh, the perspective lines. So notice how those two lines between the mouth and the nose are close to parallel. A photograph may uh, distort them. And I'm going to say may distort them. It wasn't the case with this uh, photograph. But I've seen it happen. It can happen. Uh, so just be careful with how you take the photo references. And so now that uh, vertical or sorry that perpendicular line that we drew earlier is going to orient the mouth in relation to the center of the nose and so since the model is in three-quarter we're seeing a little bit more of the right side of the face than we are of the left side of the face so again this is all to facilitate the proportions and again, remember, a proportion is just a relation. So we initially placed in that little angle right here to the bottom of the chin. And then uh, after standing back, we saw that it was a little bit off. So now we're putting that angle right back in there. 
And so again, a proportion is just a, a visual relation of one thing to another thing, or you can go so general as to say proportion is just a relation. So this is how we are relating the shapes to one another, and this is how we're going to be getting more specific with our shapes. And now we're going to be constructing the nose based on those parameters. See how the nose is fitting uh, within the parameter of that initial mark that we made for the furthest extremity to the right of the nose. And now we're working to the left of your screen here, a little angle right here. And you can tell how very minimal lines have to go in, how very few lines have to go in to tell you exactly where things are going to fit. And that is exactly the building process. This is exactly like constructing a house or constructing a building. You don't need a lot of lines to tell you exactly where something is going to fit. But the few lines that you start off with or the few lines that you build on top of must be as correct as they can possibly be so that everything else can be constructed based onto them. So these lines are kind of like the cornerstone to everything. So now we have here the uh, uh, wing of the nostrils that we just drew in there. And now you can see that we have uh, redrawn the block in, but with the added benefit of having measured exactly where these shapes are going to fit in relation to each other. Now we're going to start to block in some very simplified shadow shapes. And the shadow shapes are going to be much easier to picture after we have the linear block in as accurately as we can have it. And so that first shadow that we drew in was for the concavity of the eye. So that area, you can almost imagine uh, the structure of the skull as it turns into the eye socket. And so now we're working on the side plane. Notice how the contour of the uh, linear drawing of the face is actually uh, reflecting with the uh, contour of the shadow. So now this side plane of the shadow is going to reflect the actual linear uh, structure that we placed in for the outline of the face. And with a very light touch here, we're just etching on uh, the shadow shape here. So here's the zygomatic plane. Notice how that angle mimics the angle of the outline of the face to the left side. Notice how those angles are reminiscent of one another. And now uh, this angle for the side plane of the, the face is now wrapping around. And here we're getting closer to the side of the mouth, closer to the orbicularis oris of the mouth. And it's making a very simple shape yet exacting shape. So this is how we can build a more accurate shadow shape once we have that linear foundation established. And again, uh, what I mean is that the outline of the side of the face can also be reflected uh, with the form shadow of the face. And now we're just very lightly etching on uh, the shadow and uh, if you notice, I switched pencils. This is still a 2B pencil, but it is a mechanical pencil. I'm actually starting to really like using uh, mechanical pencils. I never actually tried them out before um, for this type of drawing, but I actually kind of like it. So again, it's just a 2B mechanical pencil. So here we have uh, the dark accent for the bottom of the mouth. Now we have the bottom of the chin. Uh, notice how you can picture uh, the shadow shape is starting to describe what is happening in three dimensions. So now we're shifting to a kind of three-dimensional way of thinking about the portrait as opposed to just those simple two-dimensional shapes. And we're actually going to uh, shade a little bit more. So we're going to push this transfer drawing a little bit further uh, than my previous transfer drawings if you've seen my previous videos and that is because um, we're gonna imagine the better the transfer drawing the better the painting so that is the better your drawing skills the better your painting skills I can't imagine how that would work in reverse but hey it could work I'm sure in some cases and so in the beginning, remember, it's the where do things fit 
So in the beginning, you're very much just searching. And once you've found where things are going to fit, you really want to start to describe what you've found. And so that's what we're doing. We're starting to describe the information that we found. So the drawing is telling us, hey, I know where the futures fit in relation to one another. And now what the drawing is trying to tell us, hmm, I wonder how these uh, features actually appear. So now we've moved beyond the where do things fit phase to uh, how can we describe these things phase. So now that we've found these shapes in space, now we're starting to describe them. Now you can see that uh, dark light that we're drawing in there, this half tone right here. So remember the dark light is the half tone just as light turns into shadow. And you'll see this in a lot of old master drawings where the only shading that they've put in is pretty much just the dark light or the half tone just before the light turns into shadow. And that's pretty much all we're going to focus on in terms of the shading of this drawing. But you'll see in a little bit that the dark light, describing the dark light as it turns into the shadow, as you're seeing here with the side of the eye, is extremely important in the uh, volume of the portrait. Now you can see that the drawing has become very dimensional with just the addition of those simple half tones, those simple dark lights. Now we're describing here the little passage as the uh, orbicularis oris turns into the side plane of the face. And you'll see this in a lot of academic drawings, how the light is described with just the dark light. So this little passage literally right here as the form of the light intersects with the shadow. And if it works in the drawing, it's going to work in the painting. So the idea here is that the better the transfer drawing, the better the painting. The stronger the transfer drawing, the stronger the painting. So that is a theory that we're going to try out here. And so here we have, uh, we're shading in this little corner. Again, this is all dark light. These are the planes, the uh, most extreme planes that are angling the furthest away from the light. And that is the key, describing the way the form interacts with the light. Now this area right here is going to be a little bit darker. And again, with the pencil, it gives you a lot of accuracy. Now we're going to put in a little light wash here for the side of the orbicularis oris. And now we're going to see how this portion turns away from the light ever so slightly. And again, this is why I really start. I started liking uh, the mechanical pencil because it creates a very nice touch. And uh, as far as the mechanical pencil is concerned, this is a uh, 7, I think. Uh, the lead is a 7 millimeter. But in any case, that all of that is going to be typed in the description box for you. So here we have this dark, getting extremely dark as it turns into the mouth. This is pretty much a dark light because it's very close to being in shadow, but not quite in shadow. And ask yourself, what's the rush? Why are you rushing through certain stages of your painting? Why do you feel this need to wave the paintbrush or the pencil in the air so rapidly? Why don't you slow down? Take your time and observe. Try to observe the model just as much as you paint or draw. So that is, spend as much time observing as you do actually drawing or painting. So that is the transfer drawing. And the next thing we're going to do is move on to the underpainting.